Now, uh, there's something I want to put on the screen right now uh, with respect to, and, and Professor Jampo, I'll bring you here, this um, particular instance of the futuristic implication of the decision as Dr. Pagre Bwanchi Dankwa made reference to. And we'll put it on the screen right now. Um, and what the speaker said in his ruling he said if article quote if article 97 1 g and h were to apply only to future parliaments they would be rendered superfluous by the time the next parliament is constituted any member of parliament who has defected or switched political allegiance during the current parliament will no longer be in violation of this provision. They will start the next session aligned with their new party or an, as an independent. Thus, there will be no defection and the violation will be wiped clean. That is the speaker's <coughs> ruling on this argument of the fact that these persons have expressed intentions to contest future elections. So why is a decision being taken now? For example. <laughs> no, you see, <clears throat> I, I think um, in the course of the week, I sent you some write-ups yes. um, about my positioning on this. Um, I have always not shied away from swimming against the tide. Mm -hmm. I believe that Professor Michael Quay was wrong in his ruling. Speaker Bagwin was also wrong in this particular ruling. And I have espoused my reasoning you know, yes. for that. But I thought that we're going to look at um, the other matters that have risen as a result of such ruling. So, okay, if you would permit me, I'll I go um, back to explaining why I think that um, both of them were wrong in their rulings that they gave. Then I'll be also talk about the Supreme the Court's, foundation uh, the for Supreme what Court's response. Mean. Now, let's note this. See, there is always a historical antecedent um, to laws that are made. For instance, if today you are told that a president can hold office for only two terms of, you know, yeah. um, two terms, you can do just four years and then you do another four years. Afterwards, you go away. If you want to appreciate why we have such a law, you must understand our history, in times of history or in our historical past, when independent fighters like Kwame Nkrumah, Leopold Seda Senghor, Sekuturi, and all of them had fought for independence and had attained independence, they said that, look, after all, our traditional political authorities, when they are appointed as chiefs or when they are selected as chiefs, they rule till they die. So if we have been able to attain independence for ourselves, we must also rule till we die. Mm -hmm. So they converted, um, they, are part, uh, uh, they formed one party state and wanted to be presidents for life. The framers of the 1992 constitution didn't want us to go there. That's why they said you can do a maximum of just eight years. So that's a historical narration to that. Now let's come back to this law that has been a source of this um, Confucian. So on the basis of principle, it cannot be the case that you would agree with what's happening today. If, in fact, you disagree with what's happening today and agree with what happened in the case of Professor Michael Quay. No, no, no. I'm saying that both Okwey and Bagbin were wrong. And I want mm. to explain why. Yes. Now, so the law that they quoted... How about okay, Wayu Saini? No, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come to Wayu Saini's own. Wayu Saini's own was the proper application of the law. And I'll come to that, please. So... um. In 1958, Kwame Nkrumah passed a law called the Preventive Detention Act. Now, that Preventive Detention Act mandated him, Nkrumah, to throw suspected political enemies to jail for five years. You go in for five years, and before you come, and your case will be heard. Sometimes you can go in for five years and then you come, your case is being heard and say you are not even guilty. But you may have served even for five, uh, jail, no, jail, jail terms for five years. 
So through the application of the Notorious Preventive Detention Act, several political enemies or political opponents in the parliament were thrown to jail. R.R. Aponsa was thrown into jail. Victor Ousu was thrown into jail. K. Busia had to flee. Now, there were some politicians or MPs from the Northern People's Party. Um, you can talk about um, Dr. Baumia's father, our current um, vice president and flag, uh, flag bearer of the MPP, his father. Um, you can talk about Yakubu Tali. You can talk about J.A. Braimer. Now, these and other members of um, parliament, out of fear of the intimidation tactics of Kwame Nkrumah, voluntarily had to go to Kwame Nkrumah and to plead that they, they want to cross carpet from their party to join the CPP. In fact, some of them, their constituents, went to beg them that for the sake of your own peace, cross carpet and join the CPP so that you can have uh, your, your peace of mind. Now, around, the, around 1960, the number of the opposition in parliament had reduced from 32 to 16. And the number of the CPP members of parliament after the various cross captain had increased to 88. Now, it was because they had this kind of majority. That was why they used the numbers to bring about the Republican, the first Republican constitution that gave all powers to come in Chroma. Now, when Nkrumah was overthrown, so I'm talking about a historical antecedent that brought into being these rules. Mm -hmm. When Nkrumah was overthrown, the framers of the subsequent constitution said that, no, we cannot allow cross captains like that to be going on so that we can we'll be weakening the opposition. So they introduced legislations against cross captains in 1969 constitution, in the 1979 constitution, and in the 1992 constitution. And the idea was that, the idea then was that, if you belong to party A, you cannot move from party A to party B when parliament is in session. You see, they were trying to guard against what Nkrumah did by forcing the J.A. Brimers, the Baumier's fathers, to move from the Northern People's Party to join their party whilst Parliament was in session. That was what the framers of, the, of this law sought to prevent. And so, if you now want to interpret it to mean that if you are a member of Parliament, you cannot, the, no, the mere idea of declaring your intention to contest on another party's ticket would mean you should go away from parliament. Mm -hmm. I mean, it means you are, you, are, you are not being fair to the spirit or the historical antecedent that led to the um, uh, bringing in to existence of this law. See, around the time that um, these four um, people were supposed to have um, declared intentions to contest, on different parties' tickets. Mm -hmm. The number of parliamentarians, you know, in parliament, according to both sides, or according to the divisions, was the same. Mm -hmm. It was after they had declared their intention. It was still 137, 137, <coughs> one independent. Nothing had been altered. 137, 137, and one independent. The fact that somebody declared that tomorrow I will contest on MPP's ticket never altered MPP's number on the floor of parliament. So the mm -hmm. law has to do with current happiness, current mm -hmm. things that are happening in parliament. And mm -hmm. my teacher, Professor Michael Kwe, he, he knows this. He, he taught me introduction to Ghanaian politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he knows this. So mm -hmm. I was worried that he gave that kind of ruling in the Formina uh, case. In the Formina case.
And now, Speaker Bagwin also did the same. And that's why I'm arguing that both were wrong. But what is annoying is that when it was wrong yesterday, some people liked it. Today it is wrong and they are crying. And you are talking about the fact that um, the, the case of Formina um, is not the same as the case you know, that we have now. In the Formina incident, the man did not on his own say that he didn't want to be... He, he was actually dismissed by the party. He was actually dismissed by the party. And so it was not something that he said on his own that, look, I'm no longer NDC or MPP. I'm going to um, um, go to um, another party. He had only indicated an intention to do something in the future. Now, you're talking mm. about the Wyokinis, uh, Wyokinis case. It's, a, it's an excellent example of when the law was properly you know, impl implemented. In the Wyokinis case, he was a member of parliament representing NDC. And whilst parliament was still in session, during that same turn, he said that even though I am an NDC member of parliament, I no longer want to belong to NDC. I want to move to MPP in that same parliament. And so mm -hmm. he told the speaker, the speaker alerted um, the EC, and he said, well, You've, uh, you've, you've, you've made your um, seat vacant. And that's how come his case was an excellent example of the application of this particular law. Mm. But the speaker's rulings, you know, so far in my view, looking at what really led to the bringing into being of these laws, of this law, mm. the speaker's ruling, Michael Quay's ruling, Bagwin's ruling, um, in my view, were all wrong. And they were all, I mean, with Michael Quay's ruling, we heard what President Akufado said. He openly was saying that, went about saying, I cannot work with this man. I cannot work with this man. This man was going for it as an independent candidate. I will not go with him. I will not work with him. And in my view, that constituted enough pressure on Michael Quay to do what he did. And in Abang Bagwin's case, I mean, to be fair, I'm sure he was also not going to be swimming against the tide. Mm -hmm. The MDC would have also taken him on. That if they did this the last time, you should do it. So they both were wrong. But in my view, Parliament being a master of its own processes mm -hmm. must find its own ways to address some of these challenges. We cannot upset the balance of power that exists between the arms of government in a manner that makes Parliament subservient to the judicial arm of government and to the executive. Mm. The judicial arm of government absolutely has no powers to gag the functioning of parliament. Parliament, in my view, and this is a simple, common, elementary, O-level government. Those of us who study that O-level and A-level government. Simple, elementary, basic all level government. Yes, sir. Parliament is the only truly representative organ of government among the three arms of government. Why do I say so? How many people voted for Nana Kufuado as president? He needed only 50% of the vote plus, plus one. one. Mm. Yes, sir. Elsewhere, to make judges accountable to the people, judges are directly elected by the people elsewhere. So that you cannot be doing the bidding of any uh, um, appointee, any, 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 any you know, high authority. So judges elsewhere are directly elected by the people. Some but but, but when you mm. if you come to, you know, in our part of the world, judges are not elected. They are appointed. It is only within the floor of parliament that all Ghanaians have representation. So, in terms, in, a, in, in an attempt to locate where sovereignty resides, it is common O level government to place it at the doorstep of parliament. Because that is where all Ghanaians are. Duly represented. That is where all Ghanaians are duly represented. Mm. Now, 
There is a concept of judicial review that grants judges the powers to take a second look at the laws made by parliament and to declare them whether they are constitutional or unconstitutional. It is there, judicial review. Mm -hmm. But if people can run to the Supreme Court and get them to halt the functioning of parliament within the speed, no, in, 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 in a speed of light, then there should be no parliament at all. Then parliament is useless. Because tomorrow we don't know who will be aggrieved. Parliament takes a decision and then he quickly goes to the Supreme Court and then he's able to get them. And the, way, the brazen manner with which um, Afenio Markin was going about, I have taken it upon myself to, who are you? He's the leader of the MP. And so what? Majority leader. And so what? So, like others have said, we have so many cases piled up at the Supreme Court. So, 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 so many cases piled up at the Supreme Court. And recently, so LGBT, anti-LGBT people, mm -hmm. the pastors, the imams, the uh, bishops, and, and the, all and those. The MPs. The MPs. Mm. They all went to the Supreme Court to do it. Do something about this. Yes. They say they don't have time to do it. But one person is able to get you to sit in a day to take such a decision that, in my view, frustrates the functioning of parliament. It is an unnecessary attempt to bring the legislative arm of government and the judiciary. But this cannot happen in any serious democracy. It must not be allowed to happen in any serious democracy. And you see, if you have parliament led or presided over by strong world personalities like Abam Bagbin, mm -hmm. then you will be sure that such personalities would fight back to assert the independence of parliament. You know, they can also make laws to circumscribe the way and manner the judiciary also operates. It is within their right. True. Okay, so what has happened, in my view, has set the stage for a showdown, another political showdown. Now, there's going to be a flexing of muscles between the legislature and the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And who is likely to suffer? That's great. So I'm asking myself, so if Speaker Bagwin comes to say you said it, but we're not going to respect it, what would the courts do to him? Hmm. Okay, so I think so that the relationship must be such, must be, must be guided by a certain mutual respect, okay, hmm. of people must know their theft, and in terms of the balance of power, these are the same, these are three organs of government that are supposed to rule the same power. But I'm hmm. saying that if you, if given the composition, how these organs of government are constituted, it is only within parliament that all Ghanaians are represented. And so you cannot have the Supreme Court come in to frustrate the functioning of parliament. And I'm worried because they were trying to ensure that government business wouldn't be stalled. And that's why they said they went to Supreme Court. But I can anticipate and predict that Speaker Bagbin would also want to put his foot down. He would also want to put his foot down to check what is going on. And the point must be made. Mm -hmm. Judicial review is not coterminous with judicial interference. They are two different things. Judicial review is not the same as judicial mm -hmm. interference. Mm -hmm. Judges, the Supreme Court, the courts, the judiciary have the right to do what they are legally mandated to do. Parliament must also function. Okay? And so I'm hearing that people, um, the, um, the, um, the judge, judges can also be cited for doing things that are contemptuous mm -hmm. of, 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 the, of, the, of the legislature. Mm -hmm. And it's also provided for in the Constitution. You are frustrating the work of Parliament and so the Council Society for contempt. So what happens if they also decide to do that? So 
I am thinking that, you see, the leadership of parliament should be guided by a certain emotional intelligence and maturity. Mm. The leadership of parliament should be guided by a certain emotional intelligence and maturity. And I'm thinking that if it had been someone like Osei Chimensa, he would have known how to go about things such that we would have resolved this matter without plaguing ourselves with this anticipated constitutional crisis. I'm telling you, Tuesday, we are set for a showdown between the legislative arm of government and the judiciary. Because the man is also going to tell you that I also have my theft. Parliament's independence and autonomy must also be protected. Mm. We cannot allow a situation where Parliament cannot work because they, they, when they are deciding, they are not sure who would take the matter to the Supreme Court for the Supreme Court to say that what you are doing. I mean, we, we cannot anticipate, we cannot, we cannot tolerate that. So, I am saying again, if they are leaders leading Parliament, mm -hmm. let them begin to act proactively. Let them show maturity and begin to talk behind the scenes. If they don't do that, then the very things they were trying to avoid by going to the Supreme Court, they are going to see them in their worst form. Because, like I said, Bagbin would put his foot down. Mm -hmm. We know what he's, he's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the history of this parliament, given the kinds of things that he's done, it points to you clearly that he may not countenance some of these things. And, and, so and, it, and, and that presents a, a very worrying and chaotic situation. Why is it a chaotic because, situation? Because, yeah, because uh, uh, then there's going to be chaos, there's going to be lawlessness, there's going to be... There is going to be all manner of... Because you cannot throw the speaker into jail. I mean, no, if he decides that... Yeah, but yes. the speaker is also going Indeed. to tell you that what you did was also contemptuous. Because you're also frustrating what he, he tried to yes. do. So I think that we should have had a certain leadership that was going to be guided by some maturity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the brazen manner with which some of the things were said publicly. It created an impression that you know what is likely to happen at the Supreme Court. And any time, you see, if we want to build cred uh, credible institutions, if our independent arbiters are to be trusted, it should be difficult for all of us to predict um, the, uh, the outcome of their judgment when we are going there. But if you have a situation where somewhere, I'm taking you here, I'm taking, and I know what is likely to happen. And then they go, and then the same thing happens. And it creates a certain impression that, you see, like has been said here, in the 2013 election petition, mm -hmm. the value and the role and the importance of the Supreme Court was very much noticed by all Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they were the institution, uh, it was an institution that held us together. When we were all scared and we didn't know what is likely to happen for the Supreme Court that we looked up to. And so I don't belong to those um, um, group of citizens who would always want to <clears throat> lambast or run down the Supreme Court. I don't, I don't believe in that. But it is important that the Supreme Court itself strive to be in touch with reality. You don't sit in the comfort of the courtroom and then give rulings and judgments that are not that without taking cognizance of what is also out there in the public domain. It is not good. It is not good for our democracy. And so I am saying mm -hmm. that if we have leadership in parliament, let them begin to act now. Mm -hmm. Because I can anticipate that Speaker Bagman. He's going to put his foot down on Tuesday. And so the, the stage is set for a certain unnecessary showdown that would now stall the course of government. And, and it is something that if we are truly serious and we truly want to govern and we truly want to prevent or and allow government's business you know, to be um, mm -hmm. carried through, then we should begin to be acting you know, now.